Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. All together we say, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in, and in my words, in what I have done, and what, what I have failed, failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in giving this instruction, I do not praise the fact that your meetings are doing more harm than good. 
First of all, I hear that when you meet as a church, there are divisions among you. And to a degree, I believe it. There have to be factions among you in order that also those who are approved among you may become known. When you meet in one place then, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating, each one goes ahead with his own supper, and one goes hungry while another gets drunk. Do you not have houses in which you can eat and drink? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and make those who have nothing feel ashamed? What can I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this matter, I do not praise you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Sacrifice or oblation you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. In the written scroll, it is prescribed for me. To do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. May all who seek you exalt and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say ever, The Lord be glorified. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Please stand. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in Him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, 
he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die, and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation and he built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them, but when he was only a short distance from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come here, and he comes. And to my slave, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. My dear brothers and sisters, the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa atin lahat. Let us turn our attention for our reflection today to this image of the centurion. Ano ba itong centurion na ito? Sino ba siya? Ano ang kanyang function during the days of Jesus 2,000 years ago? A Roman centurion is a soldier who is in charge of 100 soldiers under him. Siya yung may hawak-hawak ng banner, no? Centurion, 100, century, kung saan sila ang mga sunod sa general na lumilipon doon sa isang area no? at after nilang ilipon ang isang area no? under Roman rule, no? yung kanilang makukuhang slave doon Captives to on will be a slave under him. So you can simply imagine and daming slave no? na under ng centurion ito. And during the time of Jesus, no? slaves are considered objects. No? Walang dignity noon. No? Walang rights noon. No? Basta ikaw ay nakuhang captive. No? Spoils of war. You will serve the one who defeated you. So itong centurion na ito, maraming property in the sense of marami siyang slave. Pero, one remarkable thing about him is that when he had this area, no, particular area under his control, no, kahit yung mga hudyo doon, friends sa kanya. That he even helped build the synagogue. Concern siya doon sa community. Concern siya doon sa slave. Hindi siya nagdalawang isip nung may nakita siyang isang slave na napaka-valuable sa kanya. He knew of Jesus no? and asks Jesus, no? papuntahin mo nga dito yung famous na teacher na yan. No? Dahil alam ko na pwede niyang pagalingin itong may sakit kong slave. Anong pwede nating matutunan dito sa kwento ng sinturyo na ito? From the ladder of authority, from the ladder of power, kaya niyang magpakumbaba at puntahan itong healer na ito. Kahit alam niya na he is a person in authority, marunong siyang makipamuhay sa mga taong hindi niya kauri. Hindi niya ka rehelyon at hindi niya kababayan. Because he was a Roman 
and the people he is trying to live with are Jews. Wala siyang kaaway. Lahat kaibigan niya. In turn, my dear brothers and sisters, itong mga elders na ito ng Kapernaum, no? mga Jewish elders na kilala rin si Jesus, no? endorsed, sige, tulungan mo yan siya. Mabuti yan siyang tao. Tinulungan niya tayong ipagawa itong sinagog na ito kahit he is coming from other country. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us, in one way or another, has people also under us. People under our authority. Yes? Yes, no? Mga nanay, mga tatay. No? Mga managers, no? Mga directors, no? And we have that obligation to do the same just like how the centurion brought his sick slave to Jesus. May mga ganito pa bang mga amo ngayon? Going an extra mile na ihatid mismo ang kanilang mga tauhan doon sa doktor. Going an extra mile na ilapit mismo ang mga taong under them to Jesus. This is the challenge for us today, my dear brothers and sisters. May the example of the centurion, even he is a person in authority, even he has slaves under them, under him, no? kayang magpa kumbaba at sabihin, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and my slave will be healed. Kaya si Jesus, amaze na amaze. I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. At yung pananampalataya no, ng sinturyo na ito, hindi to posible kung hindi siya marunong magpa kum baba. Ang pananampalatayang ito, hindi posible kapag wala siyang pagmamahal doon sa kanyang mga nakakasalamuha. We say that we have faith, no? Pari ako. No? Nagsisimba ako. No? Pero marunong ka pang magpakumbaba. Church goer ako. I have a high position in the church. Pero are people living with you are happy to see you? O baka naman pagdating mo ay dumidilim din no? ang kanilang environment. No? Even if you are up there, no? nako, ayaw na ayaw na mga taong kasama ka. With the case of the centurion, no. The people loves him. His slaves loves him. Because, in fact, ramdam ng mga taong nakakasalamuha niya ang kanyang pagmamahal. How you treat people under you speaks so much about you. Especially if you are a person in authority. May we be challenged to follow the example of the centurion. Amen. Please stand. With faith as strong as that of the centurion, let us approach the Lord and pray for the needs of the church and of the whole world. In every prayer, we all say, Lord, Lord, bless us who are unworthy. Lord, bless us who are unworthy. That the church in all places may consider no one a foreigner or an outsider. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, bless us who are unworthy, that those who govern our civil life may treat every person with justice and equality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless us who are unworthy, that we may learn to understand and accept those people who differ from us in beliefs, race, or background. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless us who are unworthy, that the elderly, the lonely, and the sick may receive the comfort of God's love in their distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless us who are unworthy, that our departed brothers and sisters may be welcomed into the kingdom of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless us who are unworthy. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intention. And let us also remember those people whom we have promised to pray for. Father of all people, your Son welcomed the faith of the centurion who came to him in humility and trust. Show us your favor as we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept this, your servant's offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and answered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, word and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by living a holy life. Thanks be to God. Maria, in the 